Hello, uh, greetings to you all over the world. I welcome you to another edition of uh, Mentoring with Bola Adewera. Today we are moving towards uh, marriage. And uh, as advertised yesterday, we want to look at uh, the issue of disclosures. I call it uh, be careful what you uh, tell your spouse about your past. Be careful what you tell your spouse about your past. A lot of people uh, feel that once they are in love, they are at par. And that uh, whatever they do, um, or whatever they disclose to one another, it's of no essence or stuff like that in their marriage. While it may feel like uh, you need to reveal uh, each and every one of your secrets in order to have a healthy relationship, it's actually okay to be discerning when it comes to what uh, you do and don't tell your partner, especially if uh, the information is uh, uncomfortable, embarrassing, or may negatively impact on your relationship. Uh, relationships don't have to be a complete open book. So many people think that uh, because I'm married to you, therefore everything I have done in the past must be told to you. Uh, there are some things that you might want to keep private because you find them embarrassing or regretful. Also, some things you can keep private because your partner just wouldn't need them. There are some things that is not necessary in your relationship. While the choice is up to you, it's always a good idea to weigh the cons, the pros and cons, before sharing something uh, about your past with one another. You must proceed knowing that um, information is necessary to share. If uh, it feels like the information is crucial to the health of your relationship, go ahead and spill the beans, no matter how awkward it seems. Uh, here are some uh, things from your past you might want to share versus things that uh, you are not obligated to share with your partner. But before I go into that, um, I want to tell you, I want to share some two experiences I had uh, in the past on this issue uh, because um, I had to find time to do uh, this story on this book. Um, marriage, 40 things you must know. What I want to teach you today concerning this issue of matrimony is in this book, Marriage, 40 Things You Must Know. Um, sometime in 2015, a friend and his uh, wife summoned me to their Surulere house uh, to speak with uh, the sister-in-law who was about to divorce, to pack it up with her husband. Their marriage was just six years old. On getting there, I met Ify and we got talking. She uh, met Paul, that is her husband, uh, seven years ago. He was an instrumentalist in the church and she was just uh, a single lady in the youth ministry. There, they got uh, talking and uh, love was in the air. When the affair was becoming very glaring to the church, they were advised to formalize uh, their relationship so as not to fall into sin. They agreed to get married. After the counseling session, and this is where I'm going to the counseling session, what happens in counseling sessions? They were told by the person who counseled them, maybe their pastor or whoever, that they need to confess their past to one another. I guess the Church of God must be very careful in, this in asking ladies to tell uh, their suitors about their past. The counselor must gauge the temperament and maturity of the guys, of especially women. Not all men could handle stories of what some ladies have gone through in their lives. Here, I'm not saying that maybe a lady has, uh, maybe she messed up or she went into prostitution. No. But you see, some ladies have some gory past, like this iffy that not off her making. Uh, I know that while ladies will easily overlook stories of sex cafes, how many guys will handle such 
luxuries of their women. If he said she opened up, told uh, her husband how uh, their eldest sister, whom she stayed with since the uh, since the primary school days, used her as a sexual uh, a sexual uh, attraction to men who came to her beer parlor in Ajibule in suburb in Lagos. How she was sexually assaulted by her sister's husband night upon night. How her sister will send her to men to collect money and will, they will be caressing her when she goes there or when she went there. How she ran away from home when one of them raped her. How she got admitted to the University of Lagos and uh, after passing her whole level, how she got used to sex and joined gangs on campus. How men were coming for them every night. I mean, ceaseless fights to Abuja to entertain uh, politicians and sexually and dancing naked in some of the private clubs, how she nearly poisoned uh, her sister uh, out of bitterness and how God rescued her when a pastor who came to pray for a politician in Lagos saw her and ministered to her and how she found Christ and returned uh, to church. The problem between Fee and Paul aggravated six years into the marriage because they had no issue. There was no child. Paul was attributing it to Ephesus past. Paul was uh, under pressure from his family concerning children, especially his mother. And then they would tell the that after six years, please, you have to go and remarry. If he was aware that Paul had leaked all her secrets to his family, Paul's mother, according to Ephi, she told me this, that uh, there was a day the mother came and the mother was telling her that, look, uh, I don't really want a prostitute for a daughter-in-law. That gave history the feeling that she has been betrayed. She was hot, deeply hot. She wished she could turn back the hands of time and swallow all she had confessed there to, to Paul. Paul believes if he was delaying him with her gory past, if he was quiet, insisting that she was medically okay, she said she aborted only thrice, every discussion about uh, every discussion they had at home ended in bitter fights, where Paul would refer to her past. Any little thing, Paul would refer to her past. I guess our religious organization should uh, employ professional counselors who are trained in relationship matters so that if he's the if he's of this world will not wreck their homes with their mouth. I am not saying that all men are immature in matters like this. No. So men want to hear all the details. Who deflowered you? Who was, uh, what was the color of bed on which you slept on? You know, what year did it happen? Who first sucked your breast? All these sort of stupid things. So men want to know. But can they handle such informations? I am not saying opening up is bad. But study your spouse to see if she can carry or if she, if he or she can carry the news. It is a matter of wisdom. Of course, there are some better information in telling of who's more shia to them. Before I go ahead, there's another story I want to tell you. This is uh, uh, this another one that uh, I was invited. Uh, let us leave that side and uh, just tell you the story. The lady to you know out of love for her husband, she mentioned a lot of things. How she was raped by her cousins, how she was raped by her brother. They were living together in the same house, you know, when they were young. They were in the, in the same room. And then the elder brother was uh, sleeping with her. And the parents don't know. The two parents were medical doctors. Father out, mother out. They only left them. The two children, only the two children. And then they started sexually abusing one another. And later in life, this lady came up. And she was telling her husband that, look, this is what happened between me and my brother. This is what happened between me and my brother. At the end of the day, that husband was never, he never loved the elder brother of the sister. Of his wife. You see, the, the wife had forgiven her brother. He told her husband, she told her husband, now the husband, anytime one sees the brother, there's always a problem. Over the past that the lady has forgotten. 
Now, that is what we are talking about. What must you tell your husband or your spouse about your past? Um, any little thing, subsequently, the guy will say, look, look, you, uh, when they have any little issue, you, you, you this, you this prostitute wife, you this stupid wife that your, 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 your elder brother has abused of this, eventually that marriage collapsed because that man could not handle some information. This matter is for you women especially. Many of you will think that, oh, I'm in love with him. I love him. There's no need. Yeah, he loves me. He loves me. He will not. No, please rise up. I want you parents, mothers especially. Of course, people will say, what about the fathers? But you mothers, you are more with your children. I encourage us to be more with their children. But you mothers, like the institution may be, stop discharging on baked children into the marriage market. Find a way to sit down with your children and tell them the truth about this life. Tell them the truth about what even you, the mother, have gone in life so that they will not repeat the, the mistakes you have done in their own life too. Don't forget, I, don't, I, I believe that everybody is entitled to their mistakes. I have a son that I don't want him, I want him to, to solve life. I tell him stories about my life. But I know that he will still make his own mistakes. But I tell him about my own past. I tell him about my own story. If at all there's anything you need to share about your past, it should be to your children. Be very careful what you tell your spouse. I have seen some very marvelous men. There was a time I did a story on Facebook on, uh, on parents who sleep with their, with their daughters, on fathers who sleep with their daughters. I remember a man called me from the United States and told me that the same thing happened between his wife and her father. He said today they have forgiven the man. That in fact, they brought the father to America whenever he was ill. And that he never behaved as his wife told him anything. Because it is about that, that is a forgiving spirit. Let me tell you the truth. Only a regenerated person, a true born again, and uh, and uh, forgive, a man with forgiving heart can hear such iffy type of story and still proceed into marriage and never refer to it for life. Only a regenerated mind, a forgiven spirit, come rain, come shine, will never refer to such things. May God give us such hearts in the name of Jesus. In my next broadcast, I will be looking at uh, seven things to share with your spouse. Seven things the man, the woman can share with their spouse. I will give you a hint now, but I'm going to do that tomorrow and uh, you will learn more. I want you to stay tuned to me, mentoring with Bola Adewara, and you will have a very good time. We will be alternating this between the marriage and mentoring itself, and I believe you will learn well. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. Bye.